Hello and welcome back to another video. This is a special one. This is how I created the Carlton documentary. I did not anticipate for as many people to see it as has been the case. It has been amazing to see the reception, the wonderful reception that the creation has gotten. And the question that a lot of people are asking is what sort of person would go out of their way to create a two and a half hour Carlton documentary which doesn't even document a premiership season? Well, the answer is you're looking at him right now. I asked you guys if you wanted to see something like this, so I thought, well, the reception was pretty positive, you wanted to see it, um, so I've acted on it. So if you do enjoy this one, make sure to drop a like. And if you are new around here, make sure to subscribe. So um, there is a lot of high quality stuff coming your way, um, hopefully. But yeah, let's dive into how I created the documentary. Let's go. So the very, very first thing that I did all the way back in like late October, early November was gathering links and lots and lots and lots of links. Um, Carlton Media Clips, YouTube Clips, we're, we're looking at like mainstream media stuff. We're looking at Blue Abroad stuff, fan content, of course. Um, we're looking at all of the above, basically. And um, it was a very arduous sort of task. And, um, you know, that was really the foundation for everything I did. I planned a few interview questions in like early November. That was the basis for how this documentary was going to look. Um, you will see on the screen now. Um, some interview questions that I formulated um, and that was what helped form the interview phase um, and, and that really guided that whole interview sort of thing. Um, the footage collection, I mean, you are seeing right now on your screen the amount of footage and how much was left on the cutting room floor. Um, there is a lot that wasn't used, a lot that was used and um, but yeah, it is just pages and pages and pages and pages all the way through from pre-season 2023 all the way through to the end of finals and obviously, you know, the reflective sort of work, um, that content that was produced by Carlton and the mainstream. So that was really the first sort of thing I did. That was the foundation. Um, and then we moved forward to the interviewing phase. So the next thing I did, of course, was the interviews, um, basically reached out to a ton of Carlton online creators and obviously had the privilege of being able to interview these people and, and allow them to tell their story. I found it really, really fascinating the way that the same events were told in a very subtly different fashion. You could, as a viewer, be able to resonate with a specific individual like for example at the semi-final someone was reserved then you had another person that was saying that they were out of their seat someone couldn't bear to watch um so you had all this variation and you could really resonate and i found that really interesting all the different perspectives leading to the one common event that we all experienced um so the interview questions, I obviously use those. Um, there was a question that I got on Twitter that asked how much is on the cutting room floor. Well, the interviews um, were an hour to an hour and a half long. And as you will see on the screen right about now, the actual footage that I used in the final documentary was about 10 to 11 minutes, maybe even less um, per person. So. There is a lot of footage that wasn't used. Um, there are so many different clips I could recycle and use for shorts or something like that. Um, but it's probably a case of that ship having sailed um, at this point because we're already so close to the new year. Um, but overall, um, the interviews went great. I obviously got to meet a few Carlton online creators, which hopefully will lead to a bit of collaboration in the future. But um, that was a really enjoyable experience. Quite a few laughs in there. Great to reminisce on the season that we had. 
um, and obviously we can only move forward from here. So um, that was a really awesome phase. I was recording those in StreamYard. So in case anyone wants to know how to do interviews and podcasts and all that sort of thing, um, that's exactly how the interviews were formed. And now for the most important part of the entire process, in my opinion, um, the scripting phase. And you're probably like, you are absolutely out of your mind for scripting a two and a half hour documentary. Well, it wouldn't be the masterpiece it was, if I do say so myself, um, without scripting. Because last year I took so much longer to create the whole thing because... I lacked that sort of direction and storytelling. I didn't know what I was really doing. I was just doing everything on the fly. I really established from the beginning with the interview questions that that was going to be how I approached things this year. And it really helped in the storytelling phase. And well, here's a document which basically is me grabbing footage from not only the interviews, but also from all that footage that I'd collated at the very beginning of this whole process, there is tons and tons and tons of links um, that I gathered and I hyperlinked it all. So if I just simply click on any one of the quotes, I can just click um, the, well, the video and it'll link me straight there. So that really saved a crap ton of time for so many quotes to go through. And, well, I'm not even joking, there is 170 pages of this. It is just absolutely ridiculous. And that's including interview quotes as well. Um, there is a transcript feature on StreamYard, which really helped me out. That saved me a ton of time because I didn't have to go through nine or so hours of interviews. Um, otherwise, that would have been even more time that would have to be used um, where I could have used it elsewhere, which I did. So um, this really helped me narrow things down quite a bit, um, get the things that I wanted. And then from there was the scripting phase. Um, and the scripting phase was a really fun thing to do because um, I could then slowly interweave all the things that people had said, link things together. And that's where you see the quick, easy, seamless transitioning between all the interviewees and them basically painting the picture. It's really fascinating. And it was almost like I just made someone else complete the sentence that was started by someone else. Um, and then I did a nice little bit of color coding because that really helped me out in post-production. Um, I was able to get all the clips I needed, you know, do a bit of cross-checking. And um, I think a lot of what I did this year helped save a lot of time. This script was about 39 pages. Um, you can see there is just tons of quotes, a mixture of a lot of different things. It allowed things to, well, ultimately come together an absolute treat. For example, like, you know, sometimes people alter scripts or don't go with the grain when it comes to the script, when it gets to post-production. But I tried to be as disciplined as possible and actually, you know, inherit as much of the scripting process as I could into post-production. Um, if you compare, like, let's say this little section here, this is sort of the little bit where we thought the game was gone in the Carlton Melbourne semi-final. You can see that everything I wrote here translated into ultimately the final product. I may put a little side by side so you can actually check that out. I remember doing the watch along. I remember getting angry with everyone because there was quite a large people had given up. I checked out. Completely checked out mentally from that guy. Okay, so Three first there, gathers the footy. Well around done, the body. Got to bring it to oh, ground. No, 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 no. Now we're done. We're, we're done. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, where's... Not yet. I was almost crying from disappointment and hurt that it was over. And I thought, you know what, great season. Yeah, even even if we lose this, I'm, I'm not going to be distraught because we have done what we said we were going to do and to even be here for this moment is incredible in itself i think that was the game that i said for the next 10 minutes you're all honorary english english people don't give up english people fight till the last one's dead so i was like they need us they need us to scream make your excuses tomorrow for, for, for now we're gonna die we're gonna die and we're gonna win this game ultimately it doesn't really consider you know the all the video clips and all the footage that was sort of more a general hunch a little like 
feeling that I had with what would work um, in terms of really feeling the sense of emotion. Um, but that was far later in the process. This in isolation was the foundation, the structure that we needed. And then it was all the visuals, you know, appealing to the senses, the visuals, the sounds, um, the text, everything to make the whole experience and, and help you as a viewer be able to reminisce um, all those crazy events. Because I mean, if I was going to get any scene right, it had to be this one. So um, I was pretty happy that, you know, it all came together as brill brilliantly as it did. And so once the script was done, I mean, I didn't complete the script fully. Um, I tried to get a kickstart on the recording and the post-production as soon as I could. So I was still working with the script side by side um, as things slowly came together. But the recording phase, that took a fair bit of time just using OBS to get footage um, the interview footage, I had to transfer that into um, the post-production suite and basically every single bit of footage that had been hyperlinked in that script that you, well, you can see on your screen right now, I basically had to click every single one of those links, get that footage and I made sure I did it in order so it would save time instead of, you know, jumping around like I did last year. That was an absolute pain in the ass. Um, but yeah, so I was able to get all that footage together and then all of a sudden it was, um, well, it was post-production time and, and that was probably, well, the most daunting task because I knew what I had ahead of me, but, um, you know, a fair bit of the work had already been done. The clips had been recorded basically in order. Um, we had the game footage sort of acquired as well. Um, so it was really about applying the more fun side to it as much as there was a lot of clip cutting, you know, I had to break things up and ensure I did not get driven insane by the most boring of tasks. And so then in post-production, I had to first cut all the interviews accordingly, according to that script that I did show you. Um, and then I had to basically set a different timeline. I had to split things into two. I had to have like a timeline or sequence for every single interview so things didn't get mixed up and then I had well the sequence for the rest like all the mainstream media footage all the game footage that sort of thing and then I could just plug in all the interview quotes as well then we added the b-roll so all the footage um that you saw from the games you know the fox footy hype ups and all that sort of stuff that all got implemented as well um so we put all that in um the game footage of course that was the most important part um so that was that was great to see um and when i say b-roll b-roll is referring to like all the training footage all like the filler you see that doesn't necessarily correlate with what you're hearing it's like two different bits of footage just meshed in together um like the video may be one thing the audio may be from a completely different bit of content so um i put all that together and then the music the sound effects the text the graphics they were all huge as well i decided um this year to do as many scoreboard checks as i possibly could um so you could remember well potentially what position we were in in, in some specific games where those key statistics were important to setting the scene. Um, and then look, that music that plays for the semi-final, that music I came across two months before I completed the thing. I knew immediately that footage was going to be used in the semi-final. It was just too epic, too climactic to waste at some other random point of the season it had to be that time um and i really found that the concluding song um in the credits world goes by it's actually a really interesting sort of song when you actually hear the lyrics it actually tells a really good story about how our season went like the chorus is sort of really telling it just reads the world goes by and by the time it does you missed it 
you didn't see it flew by because time's not waiting for me or you you will miss it if you do not catch it in time in time so it's just like those moments i mean they were very small moments like they were like 30 second sequences the blake acres goal the final sirens that actual moment of euphoria when the siren goes it's not it's not a long period of time but it is so so monumental and we had to relish it as much as possible you know and then even in the verse say yes rather than no don't let your fears lead light is at your feet Yes, regret is worse than failing. Keep the loved ones close, close enough. So that sort of speaks to the stronger together sort of thing. Um, regret is worse than failing. I found that really telling. You know, I think we needed to recognize that failing was sort of okay, but we needed to ensure that we left it all out there. Win, loss or draw in the second half of the season, we couldn't regret what we were doing. And I think that whole shift in mantra and mindset really embodies that line. So yeah, I think it was about the players embracing a system and saying yes rather than no to, well, to speak to the lyrics in a lot of ways. So there was actually a lot of thought behind the music that I picked. Um, and some of you may have picked it up, very few of you probably, but um, I'm here telling you, that that was actually some of the reasoning behind the songs that I did use. And then I just basically did all the final touches, um, did that sneak peek a week prior. The only reason that it was the really bad time of the year that I used as the little sneak peek was because that was the only section ready. That is literally as simple as it gets. I probably would have picked something more lighthearted if I had my time again. Um, but that being said, you know, I think, well, more opposing supporters, I think, seem to forget that even though in a lot of people's eyes, you know, the season was glorified, I mean, we had to recognize that that shit happened. And a lot of people were taking the piss and saying, or opposing supporters were saying, well, you know, it was a failed season, you know, they were sending me clips of like, you know, the screaming at the players down the tunnel um and they asked well are you gonna use this and i was like well bloody oath i am because ultimately we were documenting the season you know there was nothing to hide there was nothing that you could hide from because what's happened is history so i needed to tell the story about everything um and the reason for picking the sneak peek or should i say the sneak peeks content was partially for that very reason as well so um that was the reasoning behind that and then the rendering and uploading process that's the more that's more the shit you don't really care about but it took like two to three hours to upload all of that um and then it was just basically ready to go the premiere was awesome 80 people i peaked at um i think it was like probably around the semi-final um when that was airing so um, that was awesome to see and I constantly use this example to help depict how this channel has grown over the last year. The premiere for the 2022 doco only had seven people at its peak. Seven. And we had 80 at one time. So that was awesome and ultimately it is my largest viewing video um, on the channel, most successful, most likes, most comments, most everything. Um, it's been awesome to see, and I really thank everyone for being a part of this journey. Um, well, I mean, you only saw the finished product, but um, obviously quite a few people involved in getting it all together. Not only the people that I interviewed, but all the people that made up all the content that I basically ripped um you know so many different people and i think that really is special because well you know carlton's mantra nowadays is stronger together and i really wanted to draw on that fan element this year so so as much footage as i could source from different places and different people and different perspectives i did and um you know it really created an 
unbelievable sort of product and and one that i'm really proud of so um thank you everyone who who contributed it is just it's crazy that it all came together and so just to quantify how hard i worked over that six week period you know day in day out um tracking back from january 10 this is the timeline sequence of the finished product it is so big and there are so many clips involved that my computer nearly crashed probably nearly blew up i don't know but um it's actually i think it's more of a miracle that i was able to actually get this thing rendered um as opposed to me making it um even though both things seemed impossible so um yeah it's it's ridiculous how much time i spent on this um but i really wanted to share how i made it um because there's so many things that happen behind the scenes and obviously you know you watching it only saw the finished product you didn't really see much of what happened behind the scenes and how it was all put together so um to anyone watching this um i hope you enjoyed this one a very different sort of video a longer video um and i haven't done one of these in ages i don't usually do videos like this so um awesome stuff we will see you i'm hoping it's gonna be maybe a watch along um for carlton geelong um in the morning on a thursday in a couple of weeks um that should be good fun and um beyond that you will already know that i do analysis stuff so hopefully that'll be the go-to this season um but until then thank you we will see you soon thanks for for watching this thanks for the support we're nearly at 2.1k and it wouldn't be without the support of you all so thank you we'll see you soon bye for now